Numerical Computation, Chapter 9, Video Number 16. We now take a look at this stiff problem for systems, which is actually more annoying. So we now consider the following system. We choose to have a linear one, it's easier to analyze. So x, y are my two unknowns. The derivative equals to a linear function of x and y with constant coefficient. And then I have initial data given at e equals to 0. We can um, rewrite this into um, matrix vector form, forming the unknown vector, putting x, y into a vector, call it vector x and form the A matrix, taking the coefficients in front of x, y in the corresponding position, and then you can write it like this. So this A matrix here is actually very carefully chosen. So what's so special about the coefficient matrix A? Well, we see that um, if we compute its eigenvalues and condition number, if we still remember what that is, and we found that one eigenvalue is negative 1 and the other is negative 39, so it's quite a big ratio between these two, which gives me the condition number, which is 39, pretty big. So um, you can verify that the exact solution is what is being given here. You can verify it easily by plugging these two functions back into the ODE and in the initial conditions to see everything is satisfied. Okay, so in the solution, actually you have two components. One varies with the rate negative 39, exponential decay. Another one varies with the rate negative 1, another exponential decay. Since everything is decaying, then we have this property for the exact solution. That is, as time grows to infinity, both x and y approach zero asymptotically. We make some further observation. As we saw, there are two components in the solution. One is decaying at rate negative 39, and the other is decaying at rate negative 1. Coincident, but not that the rate of decay are exactly the two eigenvalues of the coefficient matrix. One was negative 1 and the other was negative 39. Because of the condition number of A is rather large, these two decays have very different rates. One decays much faster than the other. Actually, this term decays really fast. So you can see that um, after a short time, let's say t equals to 2, this term here is so much closer to 0 than that one that it's completely neglectable. So for large values of t, this term here for both x and y will dominate the solution, will be much bigger. So that term here with a very fast decay rate, e to the negative 39t, um, is often referred to as the transient term because after a short while, it just becomes so small it doesn't matter anymore. Well, it doesn't matter in the solution, but matters in other sense. Let's see, we try to solve the system with forward Euler step. Okay, so we set it up, forward step for system x, y at m plus 1 is x, y at m plus a step times the derivative at t m with the initial data, discrete initial data. One can now show by induction that the exact solution for this numerical approximation, you can write it out, x n and y n will exactly take these two terms. This probably is not too surprising because we notice for the scalar problem where the exact solution is e to the negative at, what do we get is 1 minus ah to the power n in the discrete solution. So the same thing is happening for the system as well. 
but you can plug these in and verify that this actually is a solution. So if we require the numerical approximation to preserve the property, that means xn and yn shall both go to zero as n increases. Then both terms in the solution xn and yn must go to zero, which means the base of each, these are kind of a powers of n, the base for the first term and the base for the second term in absolute value must be less than 1. So we can solve this inequality and this inequality and get two conditions and, and they both must be satisfied. So the first one gives a condition h shall be less than 2 over 39. We shall be familiar with this computation. And the second one says h has to be less than 2. Of course, h is bigger than 0. So taking a look at these two conditions, we see that the first one here is actually much stricter than the second one. So in the end, this will become the condition for the stability and it must be satisfied. So thinking back, where does this term come from? This term corresponds to the term e to the negative 39, right? That's exactly where you get the 39. And that's the term is the transient term. And it tends to zero really, really quick as t grows. After a short time, this term does not have any saying in the solution. And yet, unfortunately or annoyingly, your time step size is restricted by this term always. No matter how small the term is, you have to take tiny steps because it's there. So this phenomenon is called um, stiffness of ODE. So thinking back at a more abstract level, why is the system stiff? Well, that's exactly caused by this large condition number in the coefficient matrix, which leads to two components in your exact solution, and they are varying with a very different rates. So if you want to catch the lower varying rate component, as well as the fast oscillating varying rate, it is not easy. Next time we'll take a look at if we set an implicit scheme, could we get around this problem? Okay. Hope this was useful and you enjoyed it and see you next time.